Well, the one thing I know about the Liberal Party is, versus the Conservatives, any military guy will know if you vote the Liberal Party in, you're going to get cuts to funding. Uh, last time they had uh, Cray Chan's government in, it was so bad that there were service peepers, people doing food stamps. Mm. And Harper's government came in. They obviously increased funding, meet our NATO commitments. So for that reason alone, any military guy who doesn't vote conservative is kind of weird. For me, and it's something I really wanted to ask him, it's like, uh, you know how most Canadians do strategic voting, right? We don't actually vote yeah. for anybody. We vote against them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a really good point, actually. I've got a, I've got a map here that I wanted to present to him when... Um, we were going to go live, so I'll throw it up on the screen because I think this is going to illustrate the point that you want to make because it's like, you know. Yeah. Uh, so I just pulled up like a normal riding. So I just, you know, got something in the GTA. We got Richmond Hill here. And uh, <laughs> red is, of course, liberal and green is conservative. And they flip flop back and forth over the years. It's mostly been a liberal riding. I think there's 339 ridings in Canada. So there's that many seats that are available in par Parliament from representatives for the federal government. And of course, you know, if you're right, if if you represent enough seats to become the majority, then then your leader becomes a prime minister, basically, is the way that it works here. So it's it's probably a similar system the way it is in the US. But you know, here we got the liberals and the conservatives flip-flopping back and forth over the years with very little mention of the other parties, with the exception of down over here. If I scroll down a bit more, I can see the people's representative Igor has 507 votes. So let's say you like. Max Bernier, and you'd like him to be the Prime Minister of Canada because you stand, you know, for what he stands for. Mm -hmm. Voting for the People's Party, like, would that make sense if if it's a flip flop between the Conservatives and the Liberals? If, if you're voting for what you want, sure. But that's the thing. Let's say you really hate the lockdown policies, and Trudeau just went on. Didn't he just do a whole speech, basically saying, "Yeah, half the Canadians are going to get screwed over on this one. Screw those guys," and everybody's cheering him on. Yeah, you call them, you know, those people over there are putting <laughs> yeah. our children at risk. Oh, yeah. Remember when John Don Cherry got fired for saying those people? Yeah. <laughs> My, how times have changed. Times have sense. changed, like, haven't they? You want to vote for him. And if he gets, like, was it one seat and 5% of the popular vote, he gets a seat at the, the debate table, right? I think that's how it works. Yeah. yeah. So how can well, somebody who well, the, wants to vote? Well, the riding has say? to elect the representative to go to Ottawa, right? And last election, they got no seats. Yeah. Right. Because the Green Party's barely better than them, and they always get a seat because they Elizabeth May wins her one seat in hippie town. Right. But then, yeah, how do you tell a guy? Like, look, you're in a riding like that where literally you can choose to vote for you want to and then get what you don't want. You'll get like a liberal vaccine pass thing, but you vote for Maxine Bernier. Or you can vote for the conservatives and hopefully lose one more seat for the liberal party, right? That's strategic voting. And I'm like, why is he putting a candidate in that riding? And if so, why would somebody vote for that? Because I think PPC is mostly a conservative party. It's for like the old Harper type conservatives that have kind of been disenfranchised with the new party, if I understand it correctly. Yeah, the way I understand it is, is it somewhere between classical liberal and like libertarian conservative? It's like a mashup of all of that is the way they've been yeah. labeled. Like for me, it's great. Here it's like the liberals are two to one for votes. So yeah, well, you live downtown Canada. Toronto, man. You're right in the core. Oh, yeah. It's Soytown, <laughs> <laughs> it's, Soytown it's, Canada. It's Soytown Canada, man. And this, you know the worst part is that I'm not even a conservative. I I voted NDP so often. I Do like you really? Them as like the, I want them as the opposition party. They're a terrible party, dude. Like, well, So I was saying earlier, like, I don't know if you were watching considered. when I was talking about Jag Meat, but he was, he was a critic that was assigned to Bill 55 in 2011 when I was lobbying the Ontario government. And... And I think he was a um, Bradford writing a, a guy or Brantford. I don't know. Anyway, he was, you know, he was the elected official there for Ontario and he was a critic on the bill. So whenever a bill is presented to, to parliament, mm -hmm. each of the parties parties will assign a critic to it to basically say, all right, you know, collect the information, they pass it on to the party. And then when it gets voted to go to Royal Assent, if it passes or not, then it becomes law sort of thing. So right. he was a guy that I was working with. And there was one other NDP guy that I work with that I that I had to buy lunch to meet with him. So my lobby said, you know, we can meet with this guy, but he can only do a lunch. We'll meet in this restaurant. You know, we sit down, I buy this guy a hundred dollar steak and I'm listening to him go on and on about how much he loves his boat and his fast car. And I'm like, this dude's an NDP representative and all he's talking about is blowing money on fast shit and he's eating the steak I'm buying and he did nothing. But like he didn't want to listen to what I what I needed to talk to him about. He just wanted to talk about his hobbies, right? 
I can't even remember the name, his name for the life of me. But Jack Meek Singh at least seemed like a smart guy, right? Like he's like he's an intelligent guy. He's a lawyer. Um, he assured me that he was going to do what was right for the consumer. And the way the legislation and the law was written, it was very hostile towards the consumer. It would remove the option of debt relief or make it much more expensive. Um, and lo and behold, the bill got passed and it went through royal assent and became law. And all the parties pretty much agreed on it. <laughs> the, only, the only critic that I didn't feel like I was misled by at the time that I met with was the conservative critic, right? Which makes sense. Don't get, get me wrong, though. When I said I voted NDP, that was during like the Layton era. If you guys, oh, Jack know, Layton was liked by yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. Basically, it's like the NDP is always a horrible party that has like a leader that everybody oh. likes. That's the only way they get votes. <laughs> but yeah, yeah I, I'm with you on that. It's just I don't want to be a conservative. I don't want to be a liberal. I don't think they're like the states anyway, where <clears> they have <throat> Democrats and Republicans. Ours are both business friendly. It's more of like a East Coast versus West West Coast thing. One of the one of the big problems that isn't getting airtime right now. I mean, the airtime is is either people yelling at Trudeau when he's going to and from his tour bus, like they're calling them right wing pro protesters, but they're really just you know probably Trudeau voter voters that were yeah. pissed off because they mis got misled. It was those people. <laughs> those people over there, <laughs> and. Um, you know, the topic of the vaccination, the beer bug, if you don't do it, you know, we're going to force you to do it, blah, 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 that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But one thing I've noticed in the last two years since all of these imposed laws on Canadians is I've got about, I mean, I can count them on two hands, maybe two hands and a foot. Friends that have just said, you know what, I'm done with it. They bend me over and they tax me at 53%. I'm paying way too much money into programs that I don't agree with. I run a business that's location independent. I can go anywhere. And they just packed up their bags and left Canada. You know, they sold all of their shit, packed up their bags, and they've either gone to Caribbean islands, Mexico, uh, U.S. states that have lower uh, tax rates, you know, that are more friendlier. Um, Kinkos, all those. That's, yeah, the, but, that's the Cayman Islands for Canada. Yeah, like where are they going to get the tax revenue when all of the entrepreneurs that are chasing excellence, putting a dent in the universe, say, you know what, I don't need to live here. Well, that's, that's been the Canadian thing. Even as far back as the 80s when I was a kid, the saying was Canada cuts down the tall trees, right? And the only way to make it as a Canadian is to go is to become an American. That's why all of our sure. best actors, everybody is. The only way, like, they move down there. It's not just taxes either. It's the whole thing. It's just nothing is encouraged. There's no investment. Montreal even tried, like, tech sector investment to get, like, our version of Silicon Valley, but it turned into such like a mafia grip. We're just, we're just very bad at the entrepreneurial spirit. Like we got good people, just bad policies surrounding it. 